Jacques, it says, thanks again for such great content. Is your preference to trade bull put spreads over naked puts? Yes, uh, just for me personally, because again, as I mentioned, the capital intensive portion of my portfolio, that's 50 to 60% of what I use options for dedicated to is married puts and standard collars. I do trade standard collars occasionally with it. I have not been trading naked puts or covered calls because my focus has been on the longer term married puts and some short term standard collars. That's not to say that they're not bad. That's not to say that Ernie's not doing well with his naked puts and his covered calls because he is. I just prefer to use the bull put credit spreads. And again, I didn't mention this in our other discussion. I'll add this little discussion, Jack to Pierre's, Jacques, excuse me, to Pierre's discussion. Keep in mind that when I say I'm trading bull put credit spreads, and um, I did lose 50% February 5th through 9th of 2018, 50% of what I had invested in the strategy, that is only 10, 12, 15% of my total portfolio. Because that can happen, because Monday, September 20th can happen, those disastrous October to December of 2018 can happen. And sometimes when you're in positions like these leveraged spread trades and that happens, you might be down 40 to 50% of that total value of your portfolio. February 5th through 9th of 2018, when that sudden jump happened and the VIX spiked, I closed all three positions in the first day, or I think one of them, the two, was closed in the second day, and the average loss was 49.5%. That portion of my portfolio allocated to bull put credit spreads was down 49.5, 49.8%. But that was only 15% of my total portfolio, Jacques. So that was only 7.5% or so of my total portfolio. And I made that back just a couple months later. You bring up a good point, though. You said, do you find it more challenging to manage put credit spreads versus naked puts if the underlying moves in the wrong direction? Absolutely. It is harder. And let me explain why. I'm going to stick with Barry if that's okay with you, Jacques. Let's stick with Barry Plastics. And today, let's just sell a put against it. And BERY, not a recommendation or suggestion. You can take a look at the stock chart and you see why I'm saying that's not a recommendation or suggestion. Let's do something simple 1% return for 15 days, Jacques. 60 put, 60 cent midpoint. We're going to sell to open one cash secured put. We're going to put up $6,000 to make 60 cents. 1% return on the position, slightly out of the money. Okay, Not too bad. You know, it's Barry Plastics. It's low volatility. Okay, It's only a 1% return, though, because I've got a monetary requirement of $6,000 to make 60, to be totally cash secured. You know that, but let's, that's why the 1% is there. Can't I do better on this position if I use the same exact stock? but only put up 250 to make maybe 20 cents. Two dollars and 50 cents, I should say, in this case, on a two and a half point spread for the same expiration. So I sell the 60, same as we would do. We're gonna buy the 57.50. I'm gonna put 30 cents and I'm gonna cheat. <laughs> so we're gonna put this at 30 and this at 60. Probably be a little higher, 34, 33 cents, but that's okay. We're just gonna get a nice round number. I'm making half the income, Jacques, but I'm only risking $250 instead of $6,000. This is still a 13.6% return on my risk. I'm risking $220 to make $30. What is that again we talked about with the bull puts? That's a 7 to 1 risk reward ratio. Back to that as well. Okay. Now, what happens... 62.30. I don't want. I want to. I don't want to say a major decline here, uh, Jacques. I don't want to go ten points. I'm oh, sorry, ten percent, Jack. Excuse me. I don't want to go ten percent, Jack. What happens if it just falls five percent? If it falls three dollars below my short put strike price? Okay. Let, let's call yeah, three ten. So it drops down to fifty nine dollars. Okay. And we'll say that it's going to drop down to. I'm sorry, fifty nine. Let's just call it fifty nine fifty. That's roughly a uh, five percent decline there. But we go at the halfway point, 15 days in the trade, let's say seven days, eight days from now on October 6th, it drops to 59.50. What is my expectation? We took in a net credit originally of 30 cents. It's going to cost me $1.23 to buy to close my short put. Let's just talk about exiting now, not managing shock. It's going to cost me $1.23 to buy to close this. And I'm only going to get $8 more than what I initially paid for that position. So I'm at a loss of $55. That doesn't sound too bad, does it? Now, 
It's a total loss of $55, almost double the net credit I took, roughly one fourth of the maximum risk I could have taken. I might let it go a little bit deeper in this case. But this option we sold for 60 cents here would be our naked put. And if the stock fell 5% and it cost us $1.23 to buy it back, we'd only be down 63 cents as a loss, which would be less than half, would be about 1%, right? Because it was the 60 strike and we were totally cash secured for it, okay, in that case. So what if it fell 10%? What if it did fall the six points to $56? I'm at a loss of $176 on the bull put credit spread. This is at the halfway point. That's why it's, it's not quite at 220. But if it fell to $56, I'd lose the full 220 or 100% on my position. Here I'm losing 176, or roughly three fourths of the 220 in my position. I was looking to make 30, I'm losing 176. That's five times the amount, 404. But see, in this case, if I was in the naked put and the stock fell, let's go to expiration. There we go. I'm at the full loss of 220. Now, in this situation, if I had just gotten 60 cents for the initial 60 put as a cash secured or naked put, and the stock fell to $56, it's going to cost me $4 to buy it back. I'm at a loss of $340, which is about 4%, 5% against the $6,000 I had. This is using leverage and margin. I'm at 100% loss. It's only $220. It's not a loss of $340. But as we just talked about for Ben, if I still was bullish on this stock, Buy this back for four, have a loss of 340, and sell the 55 put for maybe 80 cents or 90 cents. Or maybe take the stock at 60 and do a stock repair position. In the bull put, if the stock starts to fall to those prices and is at 59, somewhere between now and expiration, I have to consider now what is a best adjustment. Is it just close and take that 30, 40, or 50% loss? Do I want to just close this leg, which is going to be expensive, but if the stock continues to go down, I can potentially profit on just a long put. Um, do I roll the whole bull put credit spread down and out in time for a lower profit because I'm taking in the loss but still think it's going to recover? And then if it keeps going down, I'm in the same situation that Ben was talking about. Now I'm, I'm damaging myself by trying to fix the losing position that's going nowhere near. Do I close this bull put and do a bear call? Do I swing this long option out over here? And convert this from a bull put credit spread to a bear put debit spread on a declining stock, what I like to call the pendulum adjustment. Now I've got decisions and I've got to reevaluate the whole stock. Naked put is much easier. You either just close it, take assignment and convert it to a covered call, roll the naked put itself to a lower strike and further out of the time. I wouldn't suggest you get creative by trying to convert it to a butterfly or a condor or something ridiculous like that. It's easier to manage, in my opinion, a cash secured naked put than it is a bull put. <laughs> it's just that the capital intensive positions, cash secured naked puts, covered calls, I'm already allocated to married puts and collars. I have traded a couple very low price covered calls recently just for fun. Uh, some extra money I had in my account. I went back to the old days, jock for lack of a better term. And what do I mean by the old days? Uh, when I first started with Ernie a little bit, um, not a little bit ago, a long time ago, I only had about 2,500. And of course, like everyone else, when I applied to trade options, I was only allowed to do level one trading. So what was I doing? I was buying 10 and $12 stocks and selling at or out of the money calls against them. And I started to do that with a little of the profits that I've gotten from my bull put credit spreads and other strategies there, just to have some fun, go back to the old days, a touchstone of trading lower price covered call positions. Um, of course, you know why. The, another reason why is to get back into that mentality because we do get a lot of questions. Jacques, it's not from you. You're not asking this question. But I did have one today of someone who's just looking to trade $2,000, $2,500 and can only start with covered calls. And are they going to be able to even make any returns? It worked for me well in the beginning. That was uh, 2005, 2003, I think, uh, using Options Express, actually, at that time. Um, but yeah, the positions were, you know, a couple hundred shares, 100 shares of an $8 stock or a $10 stock or a $12 stock. And then after about eight to nine months, I was doing 15 to $18 stocks. And I was just kind of moving up that way. It was working out pretty well. And then I was adding more capital and of course, to do other positions. But you didn't need to know all that, but that's essentially what it was. So yes, management wise, 
I think the naked put is easier to manage personally. I know it's frustrating for someone to say that if you've been trading naked puts and you've been taking some losses and you've over traded or under traded it, and you're not getting your returns that you want to hear me say that it's easier to manage. I'm not saying it's easy to manage. The philosophical discussion and trading against yourself comes to all of us. You outthink yourselves. It's very easy to do because you want to win. No one likes to lose. We want to win and can admit sometimes that we're in a losing trade. And that's why we were talking about with Ben that when you see that decline and it's changed direction and changed sentiment from what you originally were, you might just want to get out of the position, stop the losses and look for a better stock in that strategy that is matching your goals and what you want to accomplish. So management isn't always easy, but we try to make it easy. Uh, that being said, let's go over to YouTube real quick. Yes, I have two more questions to go, but I wanted to go here real quick. Uh, for those of you that are interested, of course, you haven't watched it by now, and I'm sure many of you have. Um, I quickly ran through the different ways I might look for the bull put. Uh, I got to put two minutes. So I can just do a search here, eight ways to manage. Okay, eight ways to manage a bull put credit spread. That's where we discussed the eight different ways, including the four that I just kind of briefly mentioned. There's some small, shorter reviews here, eight ways to almost uh, review, eight ways to manage a bull put credit spread. Go through it very quickly there in 17 minutes instead of, I'm sorry, 19 minutes instead of an hour and 17 minutes. And then, of course, as I had mentioned, covered calls, you could do that search manage covered calls or manage naked puts. I don't know if that's the best title to search for. Uh, that's an old one from six years ago, managing naked put positions, repairing cash secured naked puts, when to stop managing a naked put. It's a similar approach to what we were talking about with the uh, the covered calls, Ben. They're parity trades of one another, an out-of-the-money naked put is a parity trade to an in-the-money covered call position. Um, so you might consider it, but there are ones on managing a covered call. You just go to Power Options on YouTube and use that search function and you'll see those ideas. So if you wanted to look through the eight ways to manage a bull put credit spread, uh, that's where you could find it, Jacques, or managing the naked puts, different ones. 